you're going to find measures of angles and their intercepted arcs. Okay, and you notice we already started talking about those. And we're going to find some lengths of segments in circles. Okay, what is a segment in a circle called? Bidise? What's a segment in a circle? If I have a circle with a segment in the middle, there's a couple of different things they can be called. Secant, good try. Secant is for lines going through. No, that's good. We need to keep no difference. Okay? Alina, a chord. Okay? So, you're right. We're going to keep reviewing that because we forget. So, with our, our chords inside of our circle are the line segments, which are our chords. Not to be confused with guitar chords and our piano chords, right? Okay? Our secants go all the way through. Okay? There are lines. So our line segments do what? Everybody show me your line segment. Where's your line segment? Let's go. Ben. Okay. So your line segments, why do, why do I have fists on the end? Dominique, why do I have fists on the end? And they do what at the end? They have points and they stop. Okay. So these are called my chords. What are they? Chords. What are they? Chords. Chords. Okay. Now, show me your lines. Your lines. Show me your lines. Okay. Our fingers are open. They're representing what? Lines. They're unstoppable. They go on forever. Okay. These are our secants. What are they? Secants. What are they, Kushagra? What are they called? Secants. All right. Good. All right. So I'm going to ask you again later. You guys better know. All right. So. Um, we're going to come back to this in just a second. Okay. Now, so also today, I want to remind you of our unit question. Okay. So we're talking about the circle of life. That's our unit. Okay. And our unit question is how can circles be used in architecture and science? And I'm actually going to add geography to that today. Okay. Geography, architecture, and science. And today, we're going to do some real world problems, okay, with these circles because in our book there are theorems after theorems, formula after formula, right? And arcs and secants and whatever, okay, numbers. But it's they, we need to see these practical hands on so we can understand and remember them, right? It's much easier when you see something visible and tangible, okay, as opposed to just keeping it all up here, I think, personally. So that's what we're going to do today. All right. Now, and it's human ingenuity because in architecture you're making things, creating things, right? Science, oftentimes you're doing some lab, you're creating something, you're discovering, you're learning something. Okay? Okay. So um, first thing we need to do, um, I had my, and I actually put it up, but I had a cell phone and I put my cell phone out. But one of the things I love about my cell phone is that it can take pictures, okay? And my, my son tells me some of the newest, the iPhone 5 and whatever else, really can take very good, clear pictures, okay? So, anybody in photography in here? Anybody in photography? Photography for a hobby? Okay. Oh, okay. So I, I have my, let's pretend I got my cell phone. Okay? I got my cell phone and I'm about to take a picture. And I'm going to take a picture of Alex. Okay? I'm going to take a picture of Alex. If I am standing very close to Alex, pretty much I'm just going to get a picture of his head. It's a nice head, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. So, but as I back up further, I can probably get all of Alex and Ben's head. And if I back up even further, what do you think I might get in my picture? All of us. At least all of this side. Yeah. So panoramic, right? If I'm zoomed in, I don't see very much of Alex at all. But if I back up and zoom out, then I get a huge array of things that I can take a picture of. Okay. So keep 